People didn't know about it. People didn't even know they needed it, right? And so I, when I tell people what the product is, like this light bulb goes off. I'm like, oh my God, I need this. And I want a good show, damn it. Great for a good show? You went awesome, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to talk to you. Thank you, thank you for having Yes. Me. Welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. As usual, I'm your host, Andrew Mapp. And today I'm joined by the amazing Laura Lady, who is the founder and CEO of Fryaway. Laura, how are you doing? You ready for a good show? I'm ready. And thanks for that amazing uh, <laughs> description. Pump it up every time. Super excited. Love this product. Love the idea. Love the story. So much to get into. I always like to do the usual, pretend that no one knows who you are. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind giving us a little bit of your background, a little bit, obviously, more about Fryway, and we'll take it from there, okay? Of course. Um, so I am probably, in terms of backgrounds, um, a bit of an unlikely entrepreneur. I spent 20 years working in the toy industry. I worked in marketing and product development um, at Fisher-Price, at Mattel, at Lego. Um, I think what a lot of people don't know about the toy industry is that it is very, very entrepreneurial. So even though it's a corporate environment, because you're constantly innovating, coming up with ideas and really following an idea from, you know, from source all the way to fruition, um, you do get to touch all of the different aspects of what it is to create and launch a product. Um, so that was my professional background. And from a personal standpoint, I am a major foodie, and I know a lot of people say they're foodies, but I'm really, really a foodie. Um, I dream about food. I think about food all day. I love cooking. I love eating. I love feeding people, um, and that's pretty much what encompasses my personal life. So um, moving into Fry Away, um, it really was just a marriage of my professional career, which I just, I had a passion for building brands and creating products um, and my personal passion for food and, and spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Gotcha. So how did you come up with Fry Away? I think, you know, it's like a lot of, of, of products that come to life. It comes out of necessity. Um, during COVID, I was cooking with with my, my pod, with my pod of friends and my family. And we were in a farmhouse on a septic tank in an area that I didn't know very well and had just cooked up a big batch of Japanese fried chicken, of chicken karage. And I'm left with this big pot of oil. And I knew I couldn't pour it down the drain. One, because you're not supposed to, but two, if you do that on a septic tank, you can pretty much say goodbye to your plumbing. Um, and being that it was COVID, I had no idea where the closest recycling facility is, which for a large amount of oil is really what you should be doing, right? You don't, most people pour oil into a bottle or a jar, um, and, um, and hopefully take it to a collection place, but otherwise it ends up in the trash, um, and then in a landfill. And it was just one of those moments where I thought, okay, there's gotta be a, a better way. And I started experimenting and, um, and came up with, with Fry Away as a product. And so this was all stemming from the time of COVID? Pretty much. I think, you know, there, it, the, the seed of the idea, and I would say it, it was more of the connection, happened many years earlier. Um, and I've talked about this as well before, where I was actually, again, at dinner party with friends. We had been cooking in the kitchen and we're sitting down to eat our meal and um, this was something kind of a weekend ritual. And the topic of that weekend was fatbergs. A, a massive fatberg had been discovered in East London sewers. And for those people who don't know what a fatberg is, it's basically a 
massive agglomeration of fat and waste. So oil gets poured down the drain. A lot of households do it. Restaurants do it. Um, and that acts as the glue for all of the other waste that ends up in our sewers. So when, when all of that starts collecting, it creates a massive blockage really of monstrous proportions. This particular fatberg that was discovered in London was the size of, I think, two London double-decker buses. And um, yeah, so if you can imagine, um, we spent the evening talking, and it's not great dinner conversation, it's pretty disgusting, but we were eating and, you know, just, I was horrified and fascinated, had tears, you know, falling down my face, crying, you know, laughing because we were talking about all the disgusting things that like dentures and hair and, you know, old toys and stuff that had been unearthed in this fabric. And the worst part about it is that it has to be removed by hand. So, you know, an unfortunate team of individuals has to go down in the sewer and literally chip away at this thing. So anyway, I developed a fascination went into a rabbit hole, just trying to figure out, you know, what are these things? How are they formed? And realized that we are the reason that these things exist. And yeah. it's because we pour oil down the drain. So, you know, I think all those events kind of connected um, for me. And that's where I developed Fryaway as a solution to, to both of those problems. That is a crazy story. I didn't know they could get that big. I didn't even really know what they were. That's an, okay. Interesting. So right away, I know it's uh, essentially a, a packet that after you cook with something, you can add it to your food. It kind of solidifies it for the most part so that you can dispose of it properly. Correct. It is. So fry away is a, a plant-based powder. It's a hundred percent plant-based and non-toxic. Um, and you basically stir it into oil while it's still hot. So right after you're done frying, you're cooking in the oil, you stir it in. And as it cools down, it converts it into solid organic waste. So you can toss it away into the trash. Um, or if you have access to compost, you can also compost it. Um, the reality is that um, as, as that solid organic waste, it will biodegrade in as little as 30 days. So there's no reason to clog up landfills with a plastic bottle that's going to take, you know, upwards of 450 years to decompose, you could recycle it. Why throw it in a landfill or a glass jar? You know, a lot of people put their own like glass jar. That's never going to decompose. Um, so Fryaway was really developed as a way to take the guesswork out of disposing of your cooking oil responsibly um, and also just making it convenient and easy and honestly kind of fun because the whole process is really magical. Crazy. It's such a cool concept. So the, the interesting thing too that I realized is, so you started this more or less around COVID time. It's only 2023. You've already surpassed a seven-figure business. So this was clearly a hole in the market. So we all know, obviously, we're on Shark Tank, and I'm sure that helped. But what what aspects do you think have really helped kind of scale this business as quickly as you have? Um. It has it has scaled faster than I ever imagined um, something like this could. I mean, when I started Fryaway, again, it really started as something that I needed myself. Um, and I thought, all right, well, as long as I need this, surely there's someone else out there who might need it too. So I didn't spend a ton of time or money on doing market research or, you know, trying to figure out what, whether there was product market fit or anything like that. I said, no, I'm willing to take the risk and launch this thing. And I did it on a shoestring budget. Um, I think when all is said and done, I invested about $15,000 of my own money to start the company. Um, I started it out of my garage and uh, started slowly. I launched on our own website on fryaway.co. And um, if you've seen the Shark Tank episode and, uh, and, and seen my response to how that performed, um, it was very slow. You know, you don't just <laughs> launch a Shopify website and have people flocking to it. Um, nope. <laughs> and uh, so shortly after I launched on Amazon and um, that's where, you know, one, Amazon is, is a fantastic um, discoverability platform for new products. 
Um, there's a lot of impulse shopping that happens there because people just easily add things to their cart. But, um, you know, it, there's also a, an ecosystem there where you can advertise and, um, you know, the amount of effort that you put into your own listing is, is what's going to pay off. So if you put the effort into writing the right copy and having the right pictures and really explaining to people why they need your product, then ultimately that's going to help, um, you know, boost and grow your business. So um, Amazon has been a, a tremendous um, piece of the business and it, it keeps growing um, both, you know, just from a new, um, new buyer, new consumer perspective, but also from a subscribe and save perspective, we have a healthy subscribe, um, subscription business. Um, and, um, what also really helped to boost Fryway from the beginning was that I focused on PR. Um, you know, this is a product that did not exist. Um, people didn't know about it. People didn't even know they needed it. Right. And so I, when I tell people what the product is, like this light bulb goes off. I'm like, oh my God, I need this. I ha and I can't tell you how many times people tell me, you know, I have this jar sitting next to my stove or I have gallons of oil sitting in my basement. Now I can actually do something with it. Um, so the, the PR aspect was important just to educate people um, about the, the, the product um, and, and why it would be, it would be beneficial. Um, we started growing uh, pretty quickly thereafter, um, scaling into retail. Um, we started doing some independent specialty retail, which is small potatoes, but it's nice to start getting a read. Um, but our biggest launch was into Kroger. Um, last year, we launched about 1,200 stores. And fast forward a year later, um, we are launching 3,000 Walmart stores next week. Um, and by the end of this year, we'll be in about 7,000 stores across the country. Wow. Okay. So it sounds like a majority of your online business was coming from Amazon, but it seems like retail is about to pretty much eclipse that. Am I Retail's right? growing, growing strong. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? It's it's definitely one of those products where if you're at a grocery store or even, you know, as time goes, I guess Bed Bath & Beyond is gone. But <laughs> if you're at a, you know, uh, some kind of kitchen nest store, like style store, like that's definitely one of those like, oh, that's like a quick like grab kind of thing. It makes a ton of sense. What So before you started getting into retail and everything, what was your marketing strategy online? Um. Man, it's been it's been one of those things of trying everything and just trying to see where the traction actually is. Um, in terms of online strategy, I'd say first and foremost has been always, and this is kind of more behind the scenes, but um, just making sure that I'm never out of inventory, um, and yeah. that's <laughs> that can get stressful at times because it's going to happen. But um, I, I think that's been um, key to our success, just making sure that we're always available, we're always on. Um, another key aspect um, of our success has been customer service. Um, you know, we, we do get a lot of inquiries, we do get a lot of engagement, and um, I personally take the time to respond to most. Um, things that come through. And I think that, that um, that's appreciated. It's helped us build a community. Um, and it's also um, helped to build a solid base of advocates for the brand that talk about us, share, um, you know, share Fryway with their family and friends, buy Fryway as gifts. Um, so Fryway has, I'd say, largely grown organically just by word of mouth, because people get so excited when they try it and they actually see how it works that they tell everybody about it. Um, so that's, you know, something that you can't truly control. Um, but it is at the end of the day, it is about building that, that community, um, and that loyalty to, to the product and to the brand. Um, yeah. In terms of, of Amazon, um, I think because it's it's a category that really didn't exist before, um, it's been 
Oh, it's been a lot of trial by, you know, trial by error of um, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, and being a leader in the category also comes with its perils because you then have a lot of followers and copycats that come out of the woodwork. Um, so I bet. Yeah. So, um, but it's all good. You know, it's, um, it, I think we, I am ecstatic with, with how the last two years have gone and, I'm excited to keep innovating and keep introducing new new products and and to keep growing um, Fryaway. Nice. So you were obviously working at some pretty reputable companies. So at what point were you like, you know what, this is doing well enough. I'm doing this. I'm making the jump, and I'm going out on my own. Uh, it. I, I probably spent about nine months. Well. Let me think about this. I spent about a year working on Fryaway, developing the product, um, developing the branding and website, all the, you know, all the, the basics, the foundation of the brand. Um, and I was doing that, you know, in parallel with, with working. Um, I think probably about six months after I launched um, is when I realized, okay, this is actually a full-time thing now. Um, which is, you know, wow. thinking back really fast. Um, and, and that's yeah, kind of been what the whole trajectory for Fryaway has been. It's been on hyperspeed. We, you know, I launched in, um, you know, July, August of 2021. And within two months, I was cash flow positive. Um, so, yeah, I know you're shaking your head. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's so unheard of. Do you think that's because it was essentially, it's more or less a new category. It's a completely differentiated product. You basically have no competition. Or do you think it came from the marketing initiatives that you had in place? I mean, definitely a combination of things. Um, I, I, I like to believe that I've had some input in, in driving this forward. I'm not a newbie, right? Like I have 20 years yeah. of, of industry marketing and sales and operations experience, experience under my belt. Um, so as far as being a new entrepreneur, I, I did know what I was doing, at least, at least the basics, right? Yes, it was a new category, but the foundation was there. Um, I would say that the novelty of it um, definitely is, is, I mean, that's absolutely what has driven. Um, it was an unmet need. And I think it's still, you know, something that if you, if you were to read through a lot of the comments on our social media, they're largely negative. Um, and which is, which I find really interesting because you've got kind of the naysayers that come out of the woodwork who just don't really understand the product, but it's not because they don't, they don't understand it's because they don't fry. So they don't actually know what the issue is. You know, if you don't know what it is to have to pour oil out of a, out of a pot and into a jar with like, you've got to have ninja skills to not get it all over your counter, then you're not going to see a need for the product. Um, but they do take the time to make sure that I know that, <laughs> that they don't see a need yeah. for the product. Of course they do. Um, hey, you don't know you succeeded until you've got haters right. and they're yeah. commenting on everything. That's when you know you've made it. <laughs> we, we've got, we've got our fair share of those. Um, yeah. But we have, um, we have many more people that love and support us. And, um, yeah. and that's what keeps me Clearly. moving forward. Yeah. So obviously you were on shark tank. I'm sure that had a lot to do with your initial trajectory in the first couple of years. Am I right? It has. I mean, I um, our my Shark Tank episode aired this past January, so yeah. um, we were already a year, um, a year and a half um, into into our our journey. Um, what Shark Tank has done has been just a tremendous awareness boost, right? A lot of people watch that show. Six million people watch that show um, every week. And not to mention the episodes that then stream on Hulu and on ABC and yeah. the reruns on CNBC. So it, um, it is a, a tremendous awareness boost that's, that's pretty much ongoing. 
Um, so that has helped a lot and it's really publicity that as a small company, you just couldn't possibly afford, um, you know, to pay for, um, you know, we, we're not, we're doing well, but we're not big enough to be able to run national, you know, TV campaigns. Um, that'll be, that'll be the day when we can actually start doing that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, Shark Tank has been, has been fantastic in that sense. And from a personal uh, perspective, it was, it was great for me. Um, learn a great learning experience. Um, it was, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. And I saw, obviously, congratulations. You got to deal with Mark and Lori, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. However, I also know from interviewing many different other Shark Tank uh, businesses, that doesn't always come through. Did you, is that still in the works? Did you guys close everything? Like, how did that end out? Are you still working with them? Like, what's that look like um, of what you can tell me? Yeah, no, I mean, we we actually are not um, working together. And I guess I guess I can, I can say that now. Um, I think we just um, came to a point where we decided that it, it wasn't um, the best path forward for, for either yeah. of us. So we... Uh, that happens a lot. Yeah. You got the publicity though, so yeah. you're set. You yeah. don't need... Did you even... Did you continue to look for funding or at this point are you just like, I don't need it anymore. I got I a ton of sales from... Yeah, no, yeah. I haven't. And I think part of, you know, going back to talking about strategy... Um, from the beginning, my strategy has always been to really grow the company sustainably. Um, I don't want to do too much too soon. So even in terms of retail rollout, you know, I think we could, if we wanted to, we could be growing a lot faster. We could be rolling out to a lot more stores, but it's not, it's not the right thing to do. You don't want to roll out to retail and not be able to support it um, because it's just going to be a, a short term um, yeah. a short term boost, uh, which is not what we're here for. You know, we're, we're in it for the long haul. So we want to be able to grow sustainably with the best retail partners that we can. And, um, so that's where we are. So yeah, funding is not something that I have sought. Um, I imagine that at some point we will get there. Um, especially as, as we grow into other verticals, um, and as we launch new products, because there aren't other products in the pipeline, um, but uh, it's not something that I'm ready to do right now. I think we have we have a little bit more growth behind us before we we go down that route. I don't blame you. Plus, hold on to that equity as long as you can. I know, right? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, need to pay for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, Laura, really appreciate having you on the show. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you're probably very busy. I would love to give you the opportunity to let everyone know where they can find out more about you and, of course, more about Fryway. Thank you. No, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me on, on the show. Um, you can find Fryway on our website on fryway.co and on Amazon. Um, but we are also available in stores across the country, Kroger, Walmart, Meyer, Publix, um, you can actually check out our store locator on our website and I encourage everyone to support their local store. So shop local. Love it. Laura, thank you so much for your time. Everyone who tuned in, of course, thank you as well. Please make sure you do the usual rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff on whichever podcast platform you prefer or head over to the ecomshow.com to check out all of our previous episodes. But as usual, thank you all for joining and we will see you all next time. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full service digital marketing company specifically for e commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of the Ecom Show.